June is Pride Month, a time in which the contributions and lives of the LGBTQ plus community are celebrated. No justice! No peace! But it's a bittersweet time as multiple issues still plaguing the community are coming to the forefront. The celebration is essentially returning to its roots as a fight for justice and equality. Our liberation and our movement in Stonewall was started by black lives. They held space for us as queer individuals to have our liberation and our movement. This year, Pride is looking a lot more like it did in 1969. Pride started as a riot against police brutality led by people of color. Honey, this is Pride. We're just throwing it back this year. This is Pride. And it's worldwide this time, baby. Across the country, Black Lives Matter marches and protests have morphed into a new movement. All Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! To shine a light on transgender men and women of color. Black queer lives are black lives, and if we're going to talk about black lives mattering, we need to talk about all black lives. Not only black lives matter, all black lives matter. This comes after two black transgender women were killed. Even in San Antonio, demonstrators marched for change. The black community needs to be liberated at this time, but certainly during Pride Month, um, and we're here to come together for, for black queer folk. Black lives matter! I have to fight two battles, not only being black, also being queer. Tristan Mays says it's a fight he's faced his whole life, being black and gay. But that's what brought him and others out to the Bear County Courthouse today. Protesters aim to shed light on the discriminations men and women of color face, particularly those within the LGBTQ plus community. You're not only discriminated because of your skin color that you can't change, and you're also discriminated because of your sexuality, which you also can't change. Many shared their stories of adversity and their hope for acceptance, a message May says has never been more important. It's 2020 and nothing has changed really. It's still discrimination against black people. It's still discrimination against um, gay people in the queer community and the trans community as well. So. As of now, we're saying this is our last time dealing with this. This is our last time giving, giving people patience, waiting for things to change. No, we're going for a change ourselves. So we're not waiting back in the, in the fields no more. We're going to the front line and saying we're demanding change. I'm demanding to be respected. My existence has to be respected. My trans people have to be respected because we're all human beings at the end of the day. But this diverse community has seen its fair share of challenges over the years. In 2017, Kenny McFadden, a black trans woman, was found dead in the San Antonio River. The medical examiner ruled her death as a homicide. Dee Dee Decor, a black trans woman, says McFadden's death was a significant loss. I felt like I also lost a sister because I came to know her and she taught me a lot. She says violence against trans women of color is as real as their lack of equality. Recently, the Trump administration announced it's stripping away health care protections for transgender men and women, opening the door for further discrimination. Decor says it was the final insult. It's a disrespect, you know, it's a spit in the face. Black trans women have the lowest life expectancy in the United States, and the violence against black queer folk is rampant in the United States, from losing our jobs to getting killed. Unfortunately, it caused a lot of the young people to lead them to suicide, you know, and it should never be okay to make someone feel that their life doesn't matter, that they should, be, they should want to kill themselves than to be who they are. It's just unacceptable, and I feel that we have to get better. We have to do better. Amid the anger and defeat, a huge win in the fight for equality in the Supreme Court. I think that for a long time, just like marriage equality, before the Supreme Court weighed on the decision, there was so much uncertainty in the LGBT community. An overwhelming 6-3 Supreme Court vote ruled that a 1964 civil rights decision barring workplace discrimination for various reasons, including race and gender, must also extend to sexual orientation, offering unprecedented protection to members of the LGBT community nationwide. People who feel that they were discriminated based on their gender identity or sexual orientation can at least have their case heard. In 2013, San Antonio City Council passed its own non-discrimination ordinance, which included sexual orientation and identity. Since then, attorney Justin Nichols has helped fight some of those cases. Title VII, it normally protected the typical classes that we're familiar with, age, sex, disability, race, and religion. The problem is, is that whether or not the definition of sex included sexual orientation and gender identity was a question that had not yet been resolved. 
And so we were left with a patchwork where people were not protected under federal law in some cases. And then in some cases, courts had um, ruled that in fact, the definition did include sexual orientation and gender identity. This um, decision by the United States Supreme Court clarifies for once and for all that Title VII covers discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation and or gender identity in the workplace. Still, many find it hard to celebrate and say there is still so much left to be done. And I wasn't necessarily too celebratory, right? I think the LGBT community was still recovering from a really mournful Friday, right? Friday was rough of the HHS rollbacks. It was the fourth anniversary of Pulse. And then uh, there was news from the two black transgender women um, who were murdered in Philadelphia and in Cincinnati. And it was just a really tough day for us, right? And so part of me just wasn't necessarily expecting good news. And, you know, I was uh, surprised, um, happily surprised. You know, it's a really great uh, way to start off the week. Um, but I think like very many people, I'm still kind of recovering from that mournful Friday. Equality Texas CEO Ricardo Martinez says more work still needs to be done. We're the largest statewide organization in Texas fully committed to um, realizing equality for LGBTQ folks in all areas of the law and in, uh, the hearts of all Texans. What we have been championing for a really long time is to get all LGBTQ folks uh, fully protected um, to ensure that we have equal access to housing, to health care, uh, public accommodations, um, and employment, right? We knocked one of those off today, uh, but we have a lot of work to do. It's a fight Martinez and so many others are willing to continue. Someone can discriminate on me right now based on, on my perceived sexual orientation or gender identity, right? So although I'm protected at work, um, that is just one component of my life. And, you know, we've been trying to defend our humanity for a really long time and it's exhausting, but we're going to continue the fight to ensure that Regardless of where I am, um, I am fully protected and I don't have to compromise any part of me to obtain the rights that everybody else has.